All kids out of the pool for adult swim. All kids out! Really, Brendan, I'm serious. I can't keep driving you to school like this. Actually, Mom, I think you can. You gotta yeah. take the bus. What do you mean? You got a, you got a car. You've got Th a license. This is like you the fifth time in two weeks, right? Yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? You got nothing else to do. You know I've got things to do, Brendan. No, it, like when I leave in the morning, you're always standing there waving. And when I get back, you're still there in the same place. You sound tired. But it's because I woke up like four minutes ago. What are you, hey, why are you pulling over? I have to mail something. Give me a coffee. No! Yeah. Hey, Josie, uh, presume tight. Are you all right? Are you sick? You need a hanky? Here. You know what, Brendan? I, I want you in bed early tonight. I want you in bed early tonight. And I want you up early tomorrow. Mom. You're not going to miss the bus again. Mom. Mom. Okay, sweetie, have a good day. Mom. Mom. Mom, you drove me back home. Oh, sh Okay, here's an impression you're going to like. Tell me if you know who this is. Hey, stupid heads. Uh, my father? No, you guys should get this. Do it again! Yeah, do it again! Yeah, do it hey, again! Do it again! Okay, let me do, do it. it again. Yeah, do it again! Let me do it! Okay. Hey, stupid heads, kick the stupid ball! Uh, Coach McGurk. Right, it sounds just like him. Okay, okay, um, hey, okay, everybody, who's this? <clears throat> uh, I'm just an idiot, uh, uh, I'm an idiot, uh, uh Jimmy Stewart. Coach McGurk? No, no, it's Mr. Lynch. Walter, I, I was gonna say Mr. Lynch! <laughs> you know, I believe you, Perry. Hey, hey, yeah. everybody, guess who this is? Huh. I'm a little daffodil, little, little flowery face daffodil. I'm beautiful. Um, let me see. I'm beautiful. Uh, uh, my father? Was that Coach McGurk? No, Perry, it's you! <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Walter. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Walter, why did you want to hurt me? Perry, never. It was an homage. Really? Yeah, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I know. That's why I dress like you. <laughs> That's why I dress like you. I just did you. You dress like me. I dress like you. I dress like me. I dress like you. I dress like me. Okay, I... okay, okay. That was great. You guys are great. Brendan, do your impression of Junior Adelberg. It's really funny. Wait, wait. First of all, I can do a Nixon. Uh, but I have to go home and get the mask. No, Jason, let Brendan do his first. Well, why does Brendan always get to do impressions? Because he's good at it. Oh. Have you ever seen his Junior? Yeah. It's good. Whatever. Yeah, do it, Junior! Junior. Yeah, yeah, do it, Junior! Do it, Junior! Do it. Junior. Yeah, do it. Okay, okay, ready? Ready? Okay. <clears throat> Why is a no is a do? The trick is a no really say a anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That sort of sounds like him. That sounds just like him. That sounds good. That yeah, sounds Jason, really that sounds good, just like him. That sounds good. You, you suck, Jason. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> <Yeah>. sorry. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. things slip out yeah, like that. I hate you. Just kidding. That's <laughs> 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 better. Brendan, do more junior. The whole idea, you don't <laughs> you know what I say, uh, is a junior. Um, hey, uh, I've been here all, all week. Hey, everybody. What's this so funny? <laughs> What's so, so funny over there? Hey, how you do? Oh, look at me. I'm a uh, sound like a use. Hey, oh, wait a minute. That's a sound like me. Everyone thinks I sound like that. All right, all right, all right. Who hit him? Nobody hit him, Mr. Lynch. Uh, Brendan was making fun of him, Mr. Lynch. Oh, well. What? Thanks, Jason. Well, maybe next time you'd let me do my Nixon. Are, are you all right, Junior? Once there was a cold man finds me. Uh, oh, forget it, forget it. Brendan, Brendan, come here. What, what, what? Brendan. What? Get over here. Why were you making fun of him? I, I We were just playing around and having Oh, fun. I see. You were just playing the hurting someone's feelings game. Is that it? Yes. I mean, no, no, it's not. It's, it's, it. Look, what? quiet. You need to be a little more sensitive, Brendan. I, I know. I, Keep I just... that up, and you are going to be on a long road to trouble. Do you hear me? But we're not even being serious. We're just joking around. Like, it's not like going around saying, like, Mr. Lynch wears the same thing every day, and he smells like cheese. It's not like I'm saying that, you know? Well, good. I'm glad you're not. You know what I mean? Look, I, uh, uh, I'm, well, don't let me see this again. <clears throat> hey. Oh, come on, kick it. Kick the ball. Don't rub it. 
What, do your kids want to be losers your whole life? Play well! Play soccer! Brendan, what's the score? I think it's 14 to nothing. Too late, you're all losers! Game over! Oh, come on, ref! She tripped him! Yellow card! Yellow card, ref! Call a yellow card! Brendan, what's a yellow card? That's a, it's actually a yellow card. So it's literal? Yeah. That's idiotic. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's the matter, are you sick? Oh, no, 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 I just, I think I yelled at by Mr. Lynch this morning. So, you yelled back at him. Yeah. What did he yell at you for? And I was doing my impression of uh, a kid, Junior Andelberg, you know, and uh, Junior walks in, he hears me, and he starts crying, you know, and so... That was it? Uh, yeah. Hey, you want to hear my Jimmy Stewart? Okay. All right. Um, what's a line from that movie? Um, it's a Wonderful World, that movie, the Christmas movie. Give me a line from that. It's wonderful Life? It's a Wonderful Life, yeah. All right, <laughs> ready? Here we go. Right. It's a Wonderful Life. It's pretty good. Hey, Clarence, it's a wonderful life. <laughs> every time an angel ring, every time an angel rings a bell, he gets his wings. All right? Now pour me another brandy. That's my dad. That's not bad. Who are you doing? That's my dad watching It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. You want to hear my dad watching uh, Dog Day Afternoon? Okay. Hey, Sal, put the gun down. Now get me a beer! <laughs> do Dustin Hoffman. All right. I'll do Dustin Hoffman from Tootsie. Ready? Right. Hey, look at me, I'm in a dress. No one knows I'm a woman. Scent of a woman. That's good. Yeah. You kind of did a combination of... Do a junior. Do a junior? Yeah, make me laugh, Brendan. Yeah, you don't and know. what am I here for? Okay, okay. Hey, uh, wait a minute. Uh, he has a funny way you talk. <laughs> I have a bushy eyebrow. <laughs> he does. I uh, talk he funny. Does have... I talk weird. That's pretty good, Brendan. Talk... Thank you. Hey, everybody, it's yeah. making a fun of me. Uh... Hey, did he get mad at you for hey. doing it? <laughs> yeah, he got mad. Well. Hey, Mr. Lynch, uh, come and save me. Everyone to make fun of me. Do Lynch now. <clears throat> make fun of Mr. Lynch. Hey, I'm a Mr. Lynch. Lynch. <laughs> Mr. Lynch as the other kid. I like a pencil. Hey, what's that seven-one nothing at? What's that so funny? Oh, no. Oh, no. Everyone will make a fan of me again. Brendan. Uh-oh. Did you not hear me before? Did you not listen to me? What are you doing? I, Mr. Lynch, I... This I, is the same thing you did before. This is the same exact thing. Actually, it's, it's kind of, I kind of did a different thing. You didn't learn your lesson, did you? Le well, you will be learning your lesson on Saturday at the Sensitivity Seminar. What? In fact, since all you kids find making fun of someone so funny, I want all of you to report to the Sensitivity Seminar on Saturday. Aww. Or face detention. Calm down, Lynch. It's not that big a deal. He was doing an impression of a kid. It was funny. The kid's weird. In including you, McGurk. Are you out of your mind, Lynch? Look, McGurk, ticket sales have been kind of slow, okay? I'll pay you to go. All right, everyone's going to sensitivity seminar on Saturday. You know, the, the reason I must do those things is because I must want attention. You know, I'm I'm not that popular. I'm, yeah, I'm, but I know it's okay. I mean, you're a good guy. I know that. Yeah, you're a good guy, too. Yeah, I know that. I just had uh, no hard feelings. I was just kind of goofing around, and it wasn't very nice. I know that. So, um, you know, are you, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, I'm uh, reading the paper. Okay, well. Hey, Brandon, come to my house in a couple of days. And we'll have some fun. You bring your family to my house, we'll have some dinner. Um, okay. What? Hey, Mom, I'm home! I got in trouble today and I have to go to a seminar on Saturday. I apologize to Junior. You invited us to dinner in his house. I'll be downstairs! Not so fast, young man. Ha! Mom, hi. Hi. Uh, I'm going downstairs. Not so fast. Oh, um, uh. What about a hug? Hug? A hug. Oh, hug. Yeah, no. Oh, I'm thanks. I'm waiting for no. my hug. Yeah, okay. Uh, hey, come here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get going. Uh, 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 uh. Uh-oh. Where's my kiss? Oh, right, kiss. <laughs> Moi, and I'm gonna get going. See you later. Nice, nice running into you again. See you later. Brendan? Yeah? What was that part again about you getting in trouble that you said earlier really, really fast? I said I got in trouble really fast. Why? Because uh, Mr. Lynch called earlier. Mom! So you knew the whole time. What was all this crap with the kissing and hugging and all that well, stuff? Well, I figured I'd get a kiss and a hug before I send you to your room. You are a nasty mama. Okay, we got the cookies, got the milk, clipboard, remote. Okay, Let's see what we got. I'm all you've got, Brad and Rita. I'm your only chance of getting out alive. But if you hurt those hostages, I can't guarantee. 
You'll get out alive. I like cut right there. You hear me? Let me turn this thing up. I'm all you've got. Your only chance of getting out alive. Uh, can you hear me? Oh boy, Jason. Guys, in summation, hostage is alive. Oh, me, all you've got. Uh. I definitely want to get out alive. Oh. Hello? Uh, oh, hello? Uh, hi, Mr. Adelberg. Hello? This is Paula Small. Oh, oh, wow. Well, wow, hello, Paula. Hello, that's weird. I just tried to call for a pizza, and you was on the phone. Can you believe that? C could you repeat that? Oh, I forget what I say. Robbing this bank may have been the biggest mistake we've ever made, Rita. We really shot ourselves in the foot this time, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, we did. And we shot the guard in the foot, too. Don't forget about that. We're never going to get out of this. We're going to be killed or go to jail for the rest of our lives. I just wanted a better life for you and me and the baby. Oh, Jason. Jeez, overact a little, why don't you? I ain't got to tone that down. Cut. No, Jason. Jason, you got to be bigger. Ouch. I don't know, Brendan. I'm being pretty yeah, big. Yeah, Jason, trust me, trust me. It's a big line. You got to say it big. <sighs> I'll give it a shot. I just wanted a better life. Oh, stop, stop. You got to get bigger than that. I just bigger, wanted bigger, a better... Bigger, bigger, It's got to be bigger than that. Bigger than that. Yeah. That's, should, is it bigger? Okay. Yeah. I just bigger. wanted sorry, a better life. Sorry, sorry, stop, stop, stop. Bigger. I... Bigger than that. Bigger. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Bigger. Let me hear you. Right, you're Action. Ah! Ah! <laughs> better life! Better life! So anyway, Ken, I was uh -huh. just, I was wondering if there was something we could bring to dinner on Saturday. Oh, right, right. Well, that's not uh, so much a big deal because uh, we will have all the food here. I have no thing. You, you bring something. You bring something. No. You bring something? No. Okay. Great. I'll bring that. Okay. Make sure you have enough. Cut. Poof. Jeez. What a major disappointment you've become, Jason. Brendan, uh, back off. It's a, you're being uh, a jerk. I'm, I'm not being a jerk. I'm actually trying to, I'm just trying to be constructive. You are being a jerk. You know something there? What? You're a jerk. You're a jerk. Oh, really? Really? You know something? You're a jerk. Oh, you know what else? You're a jerk. You know what, oh, you know what just occurred to me? You're a jerk. Oh, you know what I just thought of? You're a jerk. You know what? You're a jerk. You're the jerk. Oh, you're Brendan, a jerk. You are, you kind are. Of being a jerk. You're a jerk. You're both a jerk. Why is no. Jason a jerk? You're the jerk. Hey, you know something? Brendan, what? I'm not a jerk. Guess what? What? Jason. You're fired. Rehire, Jason. Brendan! What? You're fired, Jason. How do you like I that? I don't even know where we are in the script. This is not on the script. Oh. This is actually happening. Oh. You're fired, Jason. Brendan! No, oh, I'm the guy, the hostage. I'll replace you. You're replaceable. Apologize. to Jason. It's not true. You're replaceable. You're sorry, you know something, Melissa? What? As long as I'm a jerk, you're fired. Apologize to Melissa. You know what? You, you can't fire us because we quit. Go ahead. Get no, out of here. Jason, let's go. go. Who cares? Who cares? Send flowers to Melissa. Okay, okay, quiet, please. Thank you. Welcome to... No, I don't, I don't mean quiet on the volume. Turn my microphone up. Oh, boy. Oh. Thank you. Well, welcome, everybody, to uh, Improving Your Life Through Improv, a.k.a. the Sensitivity Seminar, presented by the Math Department and yours truly. Thank you. Hmm. Quiet, please. Uh, now, please welcome, with a rousing, sensitive round of rounding applause, we're just people, too! Hey! Thank you! Wow, you guys look great, don't they, Josh? Are you kidding? This is the ugliest group of people I've ever seen! <laughs> That's not being very sensitive, Josh. In fact, let's start off with a little story from Matt on what it means to be sensitive and understanding. Matt? Well, Boy, this is gonna be a long afternoon. It's your fault, Brendan. Hey, let's not play the blame game. Try saying that three times fast. Bet you can't. Blame game, blame game, blame game. Easy. What I mess? Jason, what are you doing here? Can I go to school here? It's Saturday. Yeah. You know? Thank you, Matt, for opening up and sharing that very painful story. Uh, okay, now it's time for an improv game. Quick! I need a city, an occupation, and a skin color. Hello? Yeah, this is she. What? I won? Oh my god, I won.
pretty good. Are you serious? Look at this. She's awful. Yeah, Gwen is actually extremely charming in yeah. that lilting voice. Forget it. I think you're. I think you're crazy. Oh, she's got a hold of me. Whoa. Now I need some volunteers. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Me. How about me. Pick me. you? Me. 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 And you? Me. 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 And you? Oh, yippee! And you? Yippee! I win. And what about me? You. It's okay, Perry. I'll represent you. you. But Walter, and we can't be separated. This is true. Miss. All right, I win. Oh, oh, I need one more. Please, please. Hey, pick me. You. Me? Oh, actually, I need one more. Oh, hey, what about me? me? This is not the bathroom. You. Huh? Goodbye, my love. Goodbye, love, love. You'll always be in my heart. Lynch, what the hell is going on here? Quiet and learn something. Shut up. What's your name? Brendan. Okay, Brendan. We're going to play an improvisational game called Freeze Tag. But first, audience, we need to give Brendan an occupation. Cement mixer. I heard dental hygienist. I didn't. What about an occupation for me? A shoemaker. A horse I heard window washer. Window washer, good one. Okay, Brendan, you and I are in a dentist's office. You're cleaning someone's teeth while I'm cleaning the windows. Mm. Boy, these windows sure are dirty. How are the teeth coming? Huh. Oops, I dropped my sponge. Let me get it. <laughs> there it is. Slippery sponge. Freeze! So now we freeze in whatever position we're in, and Josh comes over and tags the person he wants to replace. And then he takes the scene in an even funnier direction. It's awesome! First time in prison? <laughs> <laughs> what? Turn your head and cough. <laughs> but now you're a doctor? Freeze! Are these shoes too tight that you're thinking of buying from me, a shoe salesman? Maybe you need an extra large size, eh, Sasquatch? <laughs> Freeze! I, I mean, never mind. Unfreeze. Never mind. Unfreeze. Keep going. Freeze! Hi, Perry! <laughs> Hi! Oh, my God! Freeze. Hey, Brendan. First time in... Prison? You know, I don't, I don't know what that means. So I dropped my slippery sponge. Hey, Sasquatch, shoe salesman. Freeze! Uh, am I still a dental person? Is that better, Tin Man? Can you move your arms now, Tin Man? Freeze! Are you gonna tag one of us? No, 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 I'm not. I just want you to stop. This is awful. So when I finish my thesis, I'll have a double master's in education and in science. <laughs> what about you? Um, I collect World War II stuff. Helmets. I got two Lugers. Mm. You gonna finish that milk? Mm. Huh? Sweetheart? Mm-hmm. Nice legs. <laughs> Jeez. I work out. <laughs> Shave. Now we come to the most important part of our show, people. Part where you leave, I hope. Shut up, Brendan. You shut up. Josh is going to talk about the need to be sensitive, not just to people who are different physically or mentally, but whatever. <laughs> Josh? Thanks, Gwen. Let me tell you all something. I know what it's like to be different. I know what it's like to be hurt. I know what it's like to be stared at, laughed at, and pointed at. I know what it... That's it. Four o'clock. And that concludes my hundred hours of community service, folks. I'm out of here. Enjoy the pizza. Oh, uh, word of advice, kids? Never protest in front of a federal building. Get arrested. Peace, dudes. T uh, time for the closing song! <laughs> Be sensitive today. And you 
Now remember, Brenda. I know, I know, I know. Don't make fun of the way they talk. I, w- yeah. I was going to say don't eat like a pig, but oh. yeah, what you said. Sure. Brendan, I have to tell you something. A what? It, it's not a bad thing or anything. In fact, it's good. It's very good, but okay. kind of bad. Right, well, what is it? What is it? You remember when I mailed a big package the other morning? No. I entered a video contest. I sent in one of your videotapes. What? And it came in third place. You sent in third place? That's all? You won $500, Brendan. $500? Wow, that's awesome. Really? I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I, I should have told you. Yeah, well, maybe you should have, but what movie did you send in? Well, it wasn't exactly a movie. I mean, it, it was a movie, but you didn't make it. It was it was a home movie I took of you when you were four years old. Remember that one? Uh, n- no. Sure you do. You were so cute. You were singing the alphabet and laughing, and then you peed your pants and started crying. You sent that in? Oh, m- Mom, that is so embarrassing. Well, I know. I mean, I shouldn't have done it, okay? I'm sorry, but I knew it would win, Brendan. Well, it's still embarrassing. I mean, knowing people looked at that tape. Yeah, well, there's... Hello, small. Oh, how are you actually, doing? They're actually going to show it on the they were, they were, they were, Oh, I have to news. laugh so much. They show their video on the news. They're showing... What? They're showing my... The video on the news? No oh, way! That's Charlie video! Come on in! I was going to tell you. Quiet, 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 quiet. It's on again. Oh, no. People can't seem to get enough of this video, so here it is again, little Brendan Small. A, B, C, D, come on. E, F, G, A, K, P, P, come on, no, no, um, close. P. (gasps) Oh my god, P! (laughs) You peed on P. Oh, Oh, that is so cute, Brendan. P. P. Okay, that's enough, Pete. Hey, Mom, look. Okay, Brendan, stop with the thing. Oh, boy. Whoa. Buy any movie, get a free rental. Ray, get, get out here. You gotta see this. Ah! <sighs> Would it have killed you to knock first? You get more when you buy movies at Blockbuster. Like free rentals. This holiday season, buy any new movie on DVD or video, even the biggest hits, and you'll get a free rental. Free rentals. Another reason the best way to buy is Blockbuster. the new Chicken Whopper and Chicken Whopper Jr. Juicy, flame-broiled chicken breast fillets with crisp lettuce and fresh tomatoes. So good, it had to be called a Whopper. You gotta have the new Chicken Whopper. Code Red, need to hide. You again. Hey, where can I compare auto insurance prices at this hour? Easy. Get your insurance quote, compare prices from other companies instantly online. I save hundreds. You'll save time, too. Quote, buy, buy print. print. Not much compares with the convenience of insurance. I gotta fly. If you're on the go, you gotta have insurance. Compare and save on auto insurance. Visit insurance.com or call 1-888-ESURANCE. What is the capital of California? San Francisco. Wrong. Robbie? Robbie? Never mind, Robbie.
You guys participating in the all-night study-a-thon? Because if you're not, you can sponsor us! We get a dollar for every hour we study, and all the money we raise goes to fight pediatric AIDS. This college is so lame. I thought college was supposed to be outrageous and totally kick ass. Food fight! That was my cauliflower, Sanford. Now everyone's gonna think I threw it. What's wrong with these people? College isn't supposed to be like this. Didn't you ever see American Pie? You know, where that horny dude travels through time and accidentally lights Urkel's pants on fire and then... Dude, what are you doing? Dinner's over. The lady just flipped the sign. We gotta go. We don't want a repeat of what happened last time. Oh no, there she goes again. Fuck up, little deli. The only sign you gotta be afraid of is harmful if swallowed. Man, there's a sign that knows what it's talking about. Yeah, sit down. I'm in the middle of something important. So anyway, Fonzie says, I'll be back, Chachi. <sighs> okay, fine. We'll go. But I'm taking some of these corn muffins for later. <laughs> I thought you were going to save those for later. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Del, check out this sweet rubber band I found. It's sweet. Cool. Guess what song I'm playing. Uh, I don't know. No? Welcome to the jungle. Listen. You mind? I'm working over here. Hey, who's playing Welcome to the Jungle? It's me! Oh, that's pure slash right there! I'm gonna ask you nicely. Would you morons shut the hell up? What are you doing there, Joe? It's my midterm psych project. The mouse has to find the food pellet at the end of this maze. He can't find that food pellet? What a stupid, ignorant animal. Hey, they're giving away Eskimo pies in the cafeteria for midterms. What?! I couldn't find it. You guys playing strip poker? No. Cool. I couldn't find the... Hey, sweet rubber band. Wanna hear Welcome to the Jungle? My axe! You mind showing a little consideration? This is midterms week. I can't believe it's midterms week already. Seems like the semester's only half over. Ah! What's that? What's going on? As your RA, I just wanted to let you know that there's no reason to be alarmed. If there is a reason to be alarmed, you'll hear this tone. Ah! Oh my god, it's Armageddon! What's all that screaming? My mouse is freaking out. It's the Midnight Yell, a barter tradition where the students blow off steam during midterms by yelling out their windows. Awesome! And this is legal? Technically, it's not illegal, but the administration does frown upon it. Ah! Come on, Del! It's awesome! Don't be a wuss! You just say ah, but in a really loud voice. Well, I don't know. The administration doesn't like it. Besides, when I'm in the dorm, I'm supposed to use my inside voice. Hey, I'm supposed to use that special shampoo and little worms in my hair. But you don't see me caving into pressure, do you? Not that damn midnight yell again. La 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 la, I can't hear that. There's no yelling. I'm in charge here. Have you been sitting there all day? Yep. I gotta be ready for the midnight yell. You never know when that thing's gonna start. What's in that jar? The same thing that's in all these. A delicious sun tea that I brewed up while I've been waiting here. Want some? Maybe just a little. Well, not that one. Wait, or is it that one? Oh, crap! Are you sure this yelling thing is a good idea? 
Dude, you heard what Todd said. It's an American tradition or something, like burritos and rickshaws. What was that? Yeah? No, nothing. You hear that? No. I could have sworn I heard something. Huh. What the hell are you doing? It's the midnight yell, dude. It's only 6.30. You don't even get the concept of midnight yell, do you? It's midnight yell. Midnight yell. Oh. Can I yell now? No. Now? You're gonna yell, aren't you? Yep. Um... Well, I guess there's nothing I can do about it then. Except enjoy one of these delicious pizza-flavored socks. But first, I think I'll close my eyes for several seconds. Then I'll be ready for that special burst of pizza sock flavor. Okay, here I go. I can't feel my legs! Oh my god! It's okay. I can never feel my legs. It's the midnight yell! <laughs> this has got to stop. It's over! Shut the hell up! Although I don't agree with that rude hooligan's choice of words, well, I must agree with his sentiment. And, of course, I admire the fact that he doesn't back down. No, I gotta go. Hey, who was that dude? Don't believe his lies. Dean, you've got to do something. I am so sick of that sentence. The midnight yell has my mouse all rattled. My entire midterm grade depends upon training him to run through the maze. Good God, man. I did that experiment in third grade. What's next? Tracing your hand to make a turkey? That was the essay part of the school's application. Damn it, I'm the dean of the worst college ever. No wonder I can't maintain an erection. Well, why can't you do something about it? I will. on this campus who have used their school newspaper as a megaphone or a hat. The midnight yell has been cancelled. At last, peace and quiet. To preserve the silence, this message will repeat until dawn. <sighs> Why? Because! Now shut up and go to bed. What's wrong with your mouse? He's still too freaked out about that stupid midnight yell. Don't you dare call the midnight yell stupid! I love that thing! It was like a son to me! Sanford, maybe it's time to let it go. I mean, even the woman on the Titanic had to let Leonardo da Vinci sink into that lake. I had the weirdest dream last night. There was a truck driving around saying that the midnight yell was banned. That wasn't a dream, you yokel. And then the truck turned into a tiger on roller skates and started breakdancing. That's ridiculous. Oh, real nice, Joe. The tiger had cancer. <laughs> there you see, Linda. Barter is one step closer to being just like Yale. Now all we need is a secret society with homoerotic hazing rituals. I mean, besides ROTC. <sighs> I can't believe I'm not allowed to yell. What about my rights? You ever hear of the right to remain silent? Oh, crap. You win this time, boys from truck. See? I knew the midnight yell would lead to trouble. Dude, you don't have to whisper. Darn right you don't. Back in my day, the man was always trying to push us around. 
but we held a sit-in, and thanks to us, Barter College no longer teaches the theory of evolution. You're an American hero. It's not about being a hero. It's about being able to look at yourself in the mirror with dignity. Well, gotta go. Someone took a dump in the dryer. That guy was awesome. Too bad we'll never do something cool like that. <sighs> yeah. Goodbye, jars of sun tea. My only regret is that I never got to drink you with my delicious sun chicken. Oh well. I'll bet when the Dean of Tulane bans something, it stays banned. <laughs> Come on, Dell. Join in. Yell something. I am yelling. Just on the inside. <laughs> uh, but oh, not now I wasn't. Do something. There's a ban in effect. Well, I don't really have jurisdiction here. This is your floor. Where do you have jurisdiction? Come on, grow a spine. Take charge. Loud Daddy scares Toddy! Loud Daddy scares Toddy! Ah! Hey, check out how loud Sanford's yelling. Outstanding! Ah! Oh! Wow, listen to that guy. He's way louder than Sanford. Who's Sanford? Ah! That's for calling in the regular pig. This one's for calling in the deaf pig. That was my Lacar. Now I need a new Le windshield. So I suppose you RAs think that free room and board just falls out of the sky, huh? It was a rhetorical question. A rhetorical question is one that doesn't need to be answered. I'm sorry, I don't have a question. I have to raise my arms periodically or my heart will stop. Listen here, you are a-holes. I want you to put a stop to this midnight yell once and for all, or it's goodbye, free housing. That's better. What did I miss? See, I'm a yeller. That's what I do. It's like an art form for me. Ed, he's just a dilettante. Oh, wait. What the hell did I just say? I mean, dildo. Outstanding. Yeah, awesome. I was gonna yell, but the opportunity never presented itself. Who are you? You guys gotta check out Ed. He's louder than Sinbad's parachute pants. <laughs> Take that, Sinbad. Oh yeah? You think he's loud? Check this out. <sighs> hey everybody, listen to Sanford. Man, that is one loud trisket. the by lot are you gonna let room 306 be louder than us i don't know did you learn nothing from dirty dancing nobody puts baby in the corner uh, hey you i'm sorry but i'm afraid i'm gonna have to write you up <gasps> Who's the RA hole now? You are! That was a rhetorical question! Oh man, my life is over. Don't worry, Del. I got you into this. So you'll get me out? Out of where? What the hell are you talking about? Out of getting written up. Relax, dude. I'm your friend. I'm right there with you. Hey, someone's doing something! Dude, I can't miss that. You understand, don't you? Yeah, I guess so. Good, because I don't. Later. I am the tiger, Todd. I am the tiger. Del Swanson. Uh, here. What's that smell? Oh, I know. It's the smell of a bad apple. Mm, you know, there are other guys who are doing it, too. 
I'll wear a wire. I'll name names. No deals. It was Sanford and Ed Bickle. They were having a contest. They're the ones you want. Too late, bucko. Prepare to be written up. What's gonna happen to me? I fill out this form and describe your infraction in detail. That's right, in detail. Then it goes in this discipline file until you graduate. That's your sock drawer. It's the discipline file. And if you screw up again, you'll end up like this guy. Uh, he's got eight of them. Oh God, I'm gonna need another sock drawer. I mean discipline file. You've got me all flustered. So that's it? I end up with a slip of paper and a sock drawer? Haven't you been listening to me? What is your major malfunction? Look, I'm going back to my room. Oh, and I'm taking the vacuum without signing it out. Fine, that's it. You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sign it out for you. There. When people see this awful penmanship, you'll be the laughing stock of this dorm. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! I'm so pathetic. When I graduate, I'm gonna work the grill at a fast food restaurant. But you can do that now. But a degree will give me the respect I deserve. Dale, ain't this when you usually hightail it out of here? I used to, but tonight I'm thinking about going back for seconds. Dal, you seem so different. I don't even recognize you anymore. Did you get a haircut? Oh man, you're gonna get it now, Bluto. He's eating his spinach. Can you jackasses get out of here? My mouse is losing focus. Well, if you don't like it, why don't you tell Todd to write us up? Yeah, Dell got written up for the midnight yell and nothing happened. I might even yell again tonight. I don't think that feller's ever gonna pay for his hamburgers. There's gonna be another midnight yell tonight. Well, I've had enough of this midnight yell bullcrap. I'm gonna handle this the same way I handled that hellish weekend when all those parents descended on the campus. What do we got? A band of hooligans who refuse to follow the law of the land. Well, did you try writing them up? Yes, we did. Let's go, men! Move! Move! Come on! This is what we spent the third weekend of every other month training for! You're gonna yell, aren't you? Yes, because I can do anything I want and nothing's gonna happen to me. Oh! Just don't get it, do you? No yelling! Want to sponsor us for the study-a-thon? We're raising money so that Dell will be able to one day walk again. This school is so lame. Nothing cool ever happens here. Food fight! Uh. Um... Can one of you guys wheel me out of here before we get in trouble? Not till you finishes your spinach! <laughs> Next week's Three South is going to be hilarious! Maybe I can give it mouth to mouth. You got crap all over your lips. That wasn't its mouth, that's its butt! Oh my god, and I think I kind of liked it! What does that mean? Just heard.
Homer eats Whopper, takes 75. Action! Three-second rule. Cut. Cut. What? I get sweaty when I eat. Double meat, double cheese, double bacon, double... Well, Barry, looks like you've solved the mystery of my curveball. But do you have any idea what's in those mystery meat nuggets? Not a clue. No one does. <laughs> Try these, Bear. KFC popcorn chicken. All white breast meat, lightly breaded, crunchy, juicy. I think the Colonel hit a home run. KFC popcorn chicken is back all summer. Hurry in and try an individual size for only $1.99 or a family size for only $6.99. And as for that mystery meat nugget, it's out of here. There's fast food and then there's KFC. So what, what has been going on here all day, Ben? What's, what I've been moving this? stuff around. I know, but why? I'm looking for my birth certificate, and I called you like three times today, and you, well, wouldn't, did, you did, weren't available. Did you look in my files? Under, under, I did look in the file cabinet. Did you look under Ben? Important documents? I saw that. That was, that was in the subsection of, of Ben. Did you see Ben not-so-important documents? I saw that, yeah. It wasn't in there. Did you see Ben to be filed? I, did not, I, didn't, I didn't find it in any of the files. Yeah. But I, I did find this picture. That I, that oh I can't get over. Look at this. God, I haven't seen this for about 25 years. Who is that? That's Sharon Koppelman. Remember I told you about Koppelman and Cats? We were a folk act. Oh, right, right. Oh, that's yeah. Sharon. She was my partner, and she was, she was my partner in life. She was my old lady, as I used to say in those days. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? We were into some very heavy stuff. What? Some what? For three and a half years, she was my, my main squeeze. We were lovers. You were lovers? Yeah. Isn't there another word for that that wouldn't make me so nauseous? I was her old man. I'm your old man now, but then I was her old man. <laughs> yeah. It's at different times. I, see, I thought you were just... Uh, yeah. I assumed that we you were just... We both played the guitar, acoustic guitar. Yeah. But we did the whole circuit. We were good. We would do the folk clubs. The um, We did uh, demonstrations, uh, sit-ins. Just tell me one thing, that you, you yeah. guys didn't snap instead of clap. Because I hate that. No, we never did that. Good. Yeah. I mean, she looks a little crazy, you know, in the eyes. You know, in the 60s, we all stayed up late. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got the crazy eyes. Yep. It yeah. was such a different time for, for everybody. For them. Well, you know, whenever I see a picture of you from back then, that it looks like you were trying too hard to be to be one of those people who, were, who was freewheeling and carefree and all the free words. Well, it's not easy to do that. That's a big belt, Dad, you know? Not in proportion to my collar. And yeah. nobody nobody wore bra in those days. Really? Well, they were all burnt. Well, she used to preheat her bra. She sort of hedged the issue, you know? So, Laura, when I, I don't know if I ever told you this, when I was in college, I was half of a, uh, of a folk act, Koppelman and Cats. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you ever hear of them? Mm. We used to have this very cute little way of introducing ourselves. We, we would say to the audience, I'd go, she's Koppelman, and she'd go, he's Katz. Uh, and then she'd say, I'm Koppelman, and I'd say, I'm Katz, with Koppelman and Katz. That's that's. Yeah, it was cute. And, um, and you can, you know, you feel free to say no, but I would love it if you would just, just for one very sentimental moment for me, if you would, when I say she's Koppelman, if you just say he's Katz. Seriously? Yep. Would you do that for me? I'm going to say he's, I'm going to say she's Koppelman. She's Koppelman. She's Koppelman. Then you go, he's Katz. He's Katz. Let's try it again. She's Koppelman. He's Katz. And now say, I'm Koppelman. And that's all I'm going to ask. 
please. It would mean a lot to me. I got about three minutes before my first patient shows up. Just say I'm Koppelman. I'm Koppelman. I'm Katz. We're Koppelman and Katz. And that's that. Are we done? I'm pretty happy. I, you know, I, I, I don't know why I'm here. I, you know, I don't know. I, I have a wife. I have two kids. It's, I don't know. I just feel like I have no one to share it with. Uh huh. That's. I... I'm trying to be a good father. Uh huh. There's some proud moments. My daughter's three years old. She's gone six months now without a cigarette. Mazel tov. And I try to get involved. It's very important. I, I, I change the cat box before my kids play in it. Huh. And my wife is a feminist. Always competing with me. She says men are inferior because they can't carry life in their belly. Yeah, I had a tapeworm this big. Looked just like me, a little balding worm with glasses. I raised him like a son. Little boober. You know, when we first got married, we agreed. No cheating on one another. You know, unless, unless our wildest fantasy could come true. So we wrote them down on little pieces of paper. She picked... Kevin Costner, and I picked Cindy Crawford. So, like, after a year went by, I said, honey, why don't we update the list? So she picked Brad Pitt, and I picked our babysitter. And I won, and she won't accept that. I, I thought maybe... Between um, patients, I'd pick a little, a little guitar. You know, you know why I'm gonna, you know why I'm gonna pick a little guitar. Why? Cause I'm just a guitar picking fool, fresh out. A guitar picking school. That's the song we used to do. Looking really? for a guitar picking gal. I'll bet my guitar picking life she'll be my guitar picking wife. And we will pick our guitars, teeth, and drool. Sing this with me. Sometimes, you know... Okay. What do you think? And be honest with me. Um, I, I just... I don't like folk music. No? No, not really. Just well, whenever is... I listen to folk music, I just... It, it's just so grating. You know, don't put a label on it. I mean, don't put that label on it if it's you hate just, it. You know, it's, you it's, know? it's just the kind of thing that... Uh, after you listen to it for for a little while, all you can think of is shut up, just shut up. Yeah, but what we did and then. And the trees and the flowers and yeah. the children oh, and I the hate... people and the marigolds. Oh, oh, sure, I hate that stuff too. I'm with you. It's too trilly. Why do they yeah. do that? That was considered at the time intense. That oh. very fast vibrato. What we now consider annoying, they used to call intense. But um, a lot of men think I'm really hot. I can't really help that. Uh -huh. It's not really something I can control, I find. My hotness and my heat. Right. And it's my incredible figure. <sighs> like, I need that. And my personality, which is such a threatening package. It's the only reason I can think of that I'm alone. Well... You know, I'm always trying to figure out the way to get the right guy. And, oh, I should go with a more professional man or a younger man or older man and my new category is guys whose families are dead you know i'm looking for a bosnian love connection because i can't deal with the families anymore yeah i have to keep going to one war-torn country after the next and find the um you know dead guy family guy who's hunky and sensitive and can appreciate me you know i'm also really into lyle menendez i remember that whose parents are dead so that's a start mm -hmm. i don't know maybe it's me but i just think he's got something and I suppose this, you know, you would probably say that I'm just setting myself up again for a, quote, unavailable man. But I think he's very bright. You know, he went to Princeton. Yeah. He didn't do so well there, but he had to kill his parents, like his junior year. And I think everything will work out really well as long as I don't make him mad. Because, <laughs> you know, he can be. Sure. But that's cool. You know, we all go through fate. Oh, like you've never had a day when you wanted to kill your parents. And reload. Come on. Dr. Katz, I'm going to need you to hold me for this next part. Yeah, I don't think that's such a good idea, Kathy. If we could spoon and I could be on the inside. And why do you get to be on the inside? Because I'm small and it makes me feel small and feminine. It's the same reason I like to be picked up and carried. Yeah. And, and also maybe like thrown up into the air and caught. But not in an aggressive way, but in a playful way. That's a little bit threatening, but not very. 
I also like to be bench pressed, uh -huh. and I like to punch guys really hard in the stomach. You know, when, when they've maybe done some ab work, and they're really proud of it, and they say, come on, hit me. And I say, oh, honey, no. And I'll give them a little girl punch, and they'll go, come on, don't insult me, hit me. Come on, harder, you can do better than that. Come on, hit me. And then I hit them really hard, and then they act like it didn't hurt. But I go right for the windpipe. What? Uh, let me ask you a quick question. Is my dad acting a little odd today? He, he didn't make you sing the compliment cats thing, did he? Mm-hmm. I, I did it, too. I'm compliment. These cats. I'm compliment. These cats. You're annoying. And I'm your son. Mm-hmm. Remember? Yeah. Hey, you wouldn't want to do it with me, would you? No. I'm cats. Doctor? Yes? Maybe I should join a subculture and just be in a biker gang. Although, you know, if you're actually in one, you call it a club. Uh, it sounds good. It doesn't want to be, say, hey, I joined a new club. It's a biker club slash gang. Yeah. I just, I don't know, I kind of have a fantasy about that where, you know, I just don't have to worry anymore and I'm on the back of some guy's Harley and he has like a, a name. You know how biker people don't have their real name. Their, right. their name is never, you know, Jaime or something. And so his biker name would, would be like um, Trouble. And I got to call him Trouble because where Trouble goes, I follow. And um, he's a freak because, you know, I enjoy the freaks so much. Yeah, why that type of man? I just like the freaky men. The men that are askew in some way. The men that don't bow down to the man, you know, the nonconformist freak, the freakazoids. Well, how do you think your parents will feel when you bring home trouble? Oh, my parents would be so, they, uh, they'd hate trouble. This is, this is really about getting back at your parents. You're, you're so angry at them for, for something. Kathy, let's, let's try something. Let's, let's do a little role playing. Okay. I'll play the part of your, your father. Introduce me. Dad, this is trouble. Don't give many of your lip. Hi, hi, Trouble. Uh, and maybe I'll call him Daddy-O. Hey, Daddy-O, what gives? What's the jig? Trouble's going to cut you. Honey, can you get Trouble something to drink? Trouble, what would you like? All right, at this point, my mom would be passed out, I'm just saying. And how, how would your mother react? What's she like? Very, she's very nurturing, and she's also in a huge, huge amount of denial. So she would, and you know, Trouble would be standing there before her with the leather vest and the tattoos and the gut hanging out. Yeah. But when she looked at him, she would see a nine iron and the shorts and then the print golf shirt. She would see basically a young Jack Nicklaus, their dream match for me. <laughs> Way back in 68, we thought we saw the light We stood for what we stood for Cause we all knew wrong from right Wow We went to lots of meetings And we talked of war and hate Just to show you how long ago I wrote this But now we're closing in on 30 and we've started getting straight, which had a different meaning in those days. And then it goes, hey, diddle, 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 hey, diddle, diddle. <laughs> that. You know, I was actually, I'm still looking for the birth certificate, and I, I can't oh, really? find it. Did you, did you try the shoebox? I, I didn't try the shoebox, but okay. I, I got stuck in the crawl space. Uh, I checked. The closet. No, I'll, I'll tell you something, Dad. It, I did find a lot more hippie stuff. Oh, you know, did you? you? Know, like a lot of the Sharon era stuff. What stuff did you find? I found a couple of patches, you know, like a, patches for your clothes. Right. I found a couple of peace sign necklaces. Yeah. And then I found a, a, a keep on trucking bumper sticker. You know, the peace signs, you know what those peace signs... Yeah. One was mine and one was Sharon's. Uh -huh. They were really engagement rings, those... The peace you know, signs. Only, only hipper. You know what I mean? No. I don't speak your lingo, Dad. You were going to get married? Well, had things worked out, you know, if I had gone with her yeah. to California... You, you would have married her? We very likely could have become husband and wife, you know? Well, why didn't you go? I, I just didn't want to admit that I didn't know how to drive a stick. I, I got married this year. That's great. I had to buy an engagement ring, mm -hmm. and I have uh, incredibly poor taste in jewelry. I would have preferred just handing my wife the money. Here, will you marry me? No? How much more? Do you take Visa? 
I, I think the engagement ring is a form of payment, though. Right. I mean, it's a statistical fact that women who never get married live longer than women who do, but men who never get married don't live as long as men who do. It's only fair, then, some type of compensation is extended. Here, this is for the life that I'm about to suck out of you. I, 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 don't, think, I don't think men and women can ever communicate that well. I think women are, well, women have a better grasp of language than men. Mm -hmm. There are no synonyms in a woman's vocabulary. Every word has its own shade of meaning. I didn't say that I was mad. I said that I was upset. Maybe you should listen. You know, women want men to be more expressive, more open with our feelings. Unfortunately, we aren't capable of being that sensitive. We simply aren't equipped with the same emotional antennae as women. You know, they got satellite dishes. We got coat hangers with aluminum foil on the tip. Yeah. Women are much more verbal than men, mm -hmm. and it's because we aren't verbal that we're rarely able to provide women with the romantic dialogue they so desire. Women should have teleprompters mounted on their foreheads. That way we could read whatever they wanted us to say and still almost make eye contact and appear sincere. Without you, my life has no meaning. I am like a bee without a flower. Je te... What city place? In Fresno, do you have a listing for a Sharon Koppelman? That's a K like Koppelman, O like Oppelman, P like Poppelman, P like Poppelman, L like Loppelman. Um, no. I'm sorry, sir. There's no one here under that listing. What do you have? I've got a Rita Coons. Okay, I'll take that. I mean, there was one exceptional. Uh, really? For you? Yeah. Who? Oh. No, I, I had a girlfriend in college named Sharon Koppelman who, she just, she would play my body like an accordion, you know. Ooh. I usually hate accordion Wait, music, but I, I think no, I'd that, make an that, exception. She was the only woman who could get me to, to hit the E above middle C. You oh, know what I mean? That's, she's good. Yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah, she just... <laughs> could you give us a little sample or it's just too late in life or... Uh... Yeah, hold me closer. <laughs> Yeah. Here comes the accordion. So Sharon, she got out of the music business and became a holistic healer. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, like like many of her ilk, she believes in um, in drinking a glass of your own urine every day. Uh huh. Because it contains antibodies that really? supposedly help your body fight off disease. Mm. And there is some kind of medical substantiation to that theory. Hmm. You know, but uh, of course, there's the downside, which is pee pee breath. Yeah. I actually found my birth certificate. Oh, that's great. Where did you, where did you end up finding it? It was in my pocket <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> you kidding me? No, it wasn't. It was in the... It was was stuck. it in the shoebox? No, that... it was stuck between two drawers. Right. Yeah. So, Ben, what's up with the, uh, with the picture there? You know, Dad, if mm -hmm. you and uh, Sharon had gotten together, I mean, you, yeah. if you'd stayed together, if you'd made it work mm -hmm. instead of bailed out, maybe uh, you would have been a big folk uh, duet. You know, there's, there's a million of them out there. Yeah, making that, bundles of money. It could have happened. I'm not. I'm not saying it couldn't have happened. And then, uh, you know, we'd be on some beach house in, uh, in one of the Santa, Santa places out there on the west coast. Santa Malibu. Well, any one of those Santa small Barbara. beach towns that a lot of celebrities live in. Yeah. You know the best thing about being famous? What's that? You're better at parties. That's true. It's a, it's a real uh, icebreaker. Yeah. You come yeah. in. You can say anything. Everybody laughs. Yeah. Everybody wants a piece. That's right. Everybody sucks up. Yep. Nobody sucks up to you. Not now. But maybe if, if you two had uh, if you two had me, I you know it wouldn't be Ben. You know, I'd, I'd be named after some constellation, Cassiopeia, or uh, Orion, the Hunter. That's what you'd call me. Dad, hey, maybe Benny this boy. isn't a good. <laughs> okay. Benny boy. Mm -hmm. Benny boy. <laughs> I love you just the way. I'd, 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 wait, let me find the good, I'd, I'd love you just the way, I'd throw it all away, I love you yeah. just the way you are. Ah, oh, that hurts. Hurts so good. Mm -hmm. well, you know, hey, Dad, you, take you, a break, come back in a couple of minutes, you guys have been terrific. I feel uncomfortable being here.
You know who I hate, Dr. Katz? Vietnam vets. That's who I hate. Yeah. What about me? What, where, where do I fit into this? What, what about the draft dodger? Nobody ever says anything about the poor draft dodger. I have post-stress syndrome. Look at me. Sometimes late at night, I wake up screaming in a sweat, thinking I'm back in a disco in Montreal. My friend Marty's always talking about the Tet Offensive. Hey, I was at Woodstock with the rain and the mud and sha na na. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I feel horrible about world hunger. And you know, last night I was watching Sally Struthers and it was really sad. I was crying and, and, and I, what can I do? What can I do? And I saw the 800 number and I, I you know, I'm not bragging, but I, I called the 800 number and I said, listen, you gotta stop running these commercials. It's bumming me out. And I really feel like I did something. I am against sex education. You wanna wipe out teen pregnancy, it begins at home. It's the parent's responsibility to sit your child down and teach them shame for their bodies. Tell your kids they're fat. That's my solution. Every time I see my children walking around, I say, drop a few pounds, you porker. They hate themselves, and I don't have to worry about the boys coming to call in. One time I was at this nightclub. Yeah. I was just dancing by myself mm -hmm. because I love doing that. I'll go dancing and I'll be in the middle of the dance floor, but I'll, I'm acting like I'm with someone else and they're getting my drink. And every so often I'll look toward the bar area and wave or put one finger up like I'll be there in one minute. The other thing I'll do is like if people are dancing, you know, in a group, mm -hmm. I'll just sort of act like one of them is my date. Okay, well, I admit that I have this guy in my life mm -hmm. who um, is just a friend that I also have sex with sometimes. You know, right. I, I don't feel any shame or guilt about it because I think everyone has that person, you know, that person that you just call at two in the morning and goes, who wants to get laid? And he goes, I do. And then he comes over. Anyway, one night we had, um, we had just finished, you know. Up? Well, um, we were just kind of lying there and um, he was doing this thing where he was just lying on the bed and sort of slowly stroking his chest. And then he decided to open up to me. And he said, sometimes, you know, I just, uh, I just get so mad and I see stuff on the news and I just think, I can see how uh, you could murder someone. And I just turned to him and I said, um, okay, we should go, there's traffic. Kathy, you, you know what the music means. Our time is up. Hey, you know what I love? You know those songs where you, uh... Instead of saying a dirty word at the end, you change it into Oh, right, a, right. I love that. Oh, yeah. I was born to be punished. Right. Born to be hurt. To be stepped on and treated like dirt. Yeah. But my love for you... Nothing dirty, yeah. Girl, it won't quit. Even though I know everything you touch turns to shame on you. I love right? that. Treated <laughs> me so... Oh, oh man. More. That gets me every more. time. More, more. Most other fellas would just up and go. Right. But my love for you, girl, it won't quit. Yeah. Even though I know everything you touch turns to should have known no. better. Every I time. Know. See? Because I think you're going to say that. I, I should have listened you're gonna say. to my friend's advice. Right. But my love for you, yeah. girl, it won't quit. Even though I know everything you touch turns to Sheila, oh. don't be so Oh, cool. there you go again. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't get any cleverer than that. Please. 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 And now, I, the great Delini, can make my own magic, like new Lunchables pizza that changes color. And behold, my new Lunchables fun snacks, totally transformed. And for my grand finale, some Lunchables have a chocolate surprise. Better hurry before they disappear. New Lunchables, make your own magic. Humans, we've come for your freaky floats. What's the magic word? Well, blast your puny planet to smithereens. It was trick or treat. I was going to say that next. Yeah. 
Aunt and Vanilla, this will please the Alien Federation. The Simpsons are back haunting Burger King. Now in every big kid's meal, you can get a Simpsons creepy classic. Each has a cookie spooky screen. You can collect all ten, if you dare. Vote self seven. Well, I think the outside is sometimes a reflection of what's inside, but ultimately, you know, what's really important is the dirt you can't see. The, like some some gasolines will leave dirt on my intake valves. That's why I like uh, a gas that helps keep my uh, my engine clean and running well, like Chevron with Tecron, because uh, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise the outside doesn't matter much, does it? Help keep vital engine parts clean, Chevron with Tecron. <laughs> what can one do? Myself think. What? I can't hear myself think. What? By the hand of Zeus, what manner of devil tree is this? I mean, what gives? There's Ajax. Well, you scared us, son. Listen to me, all four of you. I've decided it's time we did what other people who live in the same house do. We're going to start planning things as a family. How oh, about separate vacations? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about tonight's plans. I've actually asked our neighbors to come over to our house for the monthly meeting of the Black Association. Right. Come on, Amber. Quiet! People dangling from the ceiling in a net don't get to say what we're going to do. It's high time this family got involved together in a group activity. And don't even think about throwing spears, shooting bows and arrows, and dumping boiling oil on them from the roof. This is very important to me. We never have visitors. And in order to guarantee your attendance, you will remain in that net until half an hour before they arrive, at which time you will wash up. Then make our guests feel welcome, and if anybody fails to do that, I'll make his life a living hell. A worse one than it is now. Do we understand each other? Aww. Do we understand each other? Yes, yes ma'am. Peachy, let's party. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Very impressive. Everything's tip-top. I believe we're prepared to make a stellar impression. They'll be here any minute. Duckman, you fixed that short in the doorbell, didn't you? Ah! Seems to be working fine. Oh, that's them. Ajax, comb your hair. Charles and Mambo, fix your collars. Duckman, go pick up some dip in that store just over the state line. Give it a rest, Bernice. I've lived in this neighborhood for 18 years. It's a community. These people know me and embrace me as one of their own. I'll have a Manhattan straight up, bartender. I live here! Ah. Uh. Kent. Don. Kathy. Elaine. Jean. Ronnie. Edna. Dorothy. Len. Phil. Beth. Rochelle. Dave. Jeff. Jenny. Susan. So nice to see all of you. I don't know why we haven't asked you over before. You have asked. We just never wanted to come. Ever since Duckman came to our son's bar mitzvah, dumped his head in the punch bowl, then came up belching the first two verses of Harmony Gala. Duckman, take their coats. Good girl, man. What the hell are you staring at? Your lawnmower. We used to have one just like it, until it disappeared sometime after we loaned it to you. <laughs> Imagine that. Got a weed whacker that looks a lot like the one I used to have, too. Oh, bought it right after I borrowed yours. Just loved what it did to that crab dress. 
And your welcome mat looked familiar. The one with Dave and Jenny Farber on it? I'm a detective. We like to remain incognito, okay? Their TV's a lot like ours. <laughs> so are their dining room chairs. You have a silver frame with a picture of our kids at SeaWorld in it, too? Isn't that Grandma's dialysis machine? Well, 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 should have guessed it. <laughs> you're moving in the same neighborhood, you're bound to have similar taste. Sparky! So, still taking those drink orders. Oh, well then, Rob Roy. Hey, a seven and seven. Oh, the strawberry margarita. Blend and brew on shaved ice. Harry Naval! Flaming Tambico and soda. Sex on the beach for me. Oh, just give me a big bucket of whiskey. Flaming this, blend and brew that. Whatever happened to the manly drinks? The kind that made you go blind, puke till you dropped, then wake up three days later married to the daughter of some overprotective father who'd pay you to get it annulled. So, Charles, Sambo, uh, got any hobbies? Electron microscopy, Kierkegaardian existentialism, and speaking in a binary-based code only we understand. How wonderfully adolescent. One zero zero one one zero 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 one zero zero one. True, Grandmama doesn't talk much, but she enjoys delighting others with a unique party trick. Do either of you have a lighter? Goodness, Bernice, this spread is sumptuous. You really should entertain more often. Gosh, my. Which, of course, is not to say we'd always be available. There you go. Little Duckman Kickapoo juice to dull the nerve endings and make everyone seem at least mildly interesting. This uh, drink has a very unusual kick to it. What's your secret? Hey, do Siegfried and Roy tell Copperfield how they do it? If I didn't know better, I'd say it's Formula 409. Wait, don't go. You think if this were cleaning fluid, Duckman would drink it? Okay. I'll have another one. I'd just like to say how thrilled we are to host the association meeting here tonight and that I've arranged for a very special guest speaker and authority to talk to us about home security. Well, I uh, didn't prepare any notes, but... Not you, Duckman! I mean a real authority, someone who sells home security systems. What?! All those scam artists do is prey on your paranoia by telling you horror stories about perverts, sociopaths, and young Republicans so they can frighten you into buying their overpriced product. Well, not this duck. We've never been robbed because I'm the king of my castle. I've got the dangling modifiers in this English class, and no one's going to make me think like a victim. I'm so sorry, Mr. Duckman. A crude yet effective way to show how anyone can invade your home before you know what hit you. Yeah. I got a crude yet effective way to show you out of my home before you know it. Oh! Thank you so much for coming, uh, Mr. Uh... Tetzloff, Terry Duke Tetzloff. And it's so nice to see you all gathered here to talk about home security while your houses sit empty and unattended, inviting gosh knows who to break in. <gasps> well, shall we get started? And then he took the electric carving knife, cut her into little pieces, and fed her to his dog. And as for the rest of the orphans... Oh, oh my gosh. gosh! Well, it wasn't pretty. And all because they didn't have the Interlopen Fuhrer 1500 home security system. But hey, I'm not here to scare you. I'm just warning you what can happen when you value $5,999.95 more than you do the safety of your own children. I hate to admit it, but Dad was right. This is designed to prey upon our urban angst and paranoia. Now then, who'll be the first to say, yes, my family matters to me? Me! Me, 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 me! Please! Take my money first! Take mine! Please, 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 please! Bernice, say what you will. But as the man of the house, it's my sacred duty to protect my loved ones. And you. And don't worry, I didn't let him sell me that cheapy Interlopen Fuhrer 1500. <laughs> I talked him into selling me the Deluxe model, the Interlopen Fuhrer 2000. Deluxe? How much did that cost? Not to worry. Your car, all your clothes, and the kids' savings bonds covered most of it. Oh, uh, what? what? Hey, you're gonna thank me when you realize it's a small price to pay for complete security and peace of oh mind.
I thought this house was empty. Me too. But it's got the biggest alarm system on the block, so there must be some great stuff inside. Yep, here it is. Interlopen Führer 2000. This house is now unarmed. <laughs> Shh, Hillary. Not so loud. What if Bill hears you? <laughs> funny compost maggot <laughs> i never get tired of that one if you're done with your imbecilic jokes mr security and peace oh mind you might be interested to know that we've been robbed ah! <laughs> mambo wake up uh, why'd you wake me you know i like to see blade on saturdays ah! duck man i think ajax is in shock you better talk to him ajax son I'm sorry, but you're just gonna have to accept the fact that we've been robbed. Robbed? Then that would mean the TV isn't there. <laughs> I thought I was stuck on one of those cable access shows where nothing ever happens. Listen, everyone, not to worry. I'll conduct my own investigation. Fine, I'll call the insurance company and tell them we've given up. Hey, they stole my homework. And I was up all night doing my essay for career day. I wish I could crawl in a hole and stay there forever. Hey, Jax, you don't have to get that upset. I'm not. That was the title of my essay. Wait a minute. You were up all night? Didn't you notice anything? Just a Jehovah's Witness in a ski mask who said he didn't want to wake us by knocking. Oh, and I finished the butter. Ajax, how could that happen? I can't believe you're that oblivious to the world around you. Sorry, Dodd. Next time, try to remember. There are other people in this house who might have liked a little butter, too. Will you forget about the butter? Did it ever occur to anybody that Mambo and I have lost almost everything we own? Including our science fair project, the effects of sunlight on electromagnetic isotopes. Hey, Rod, open the sunroof. <laughs> things that were near and dear to us boys. I, for example, can't bear the thought of somebody else using my upper thigh massager. No, me neither. However, our things are gone, and I think the only constructive thing to do at this point is to blame your father. Me? How much stuff do you think would have been missing if I hadn't gotten the security system? You're right, Dad. Thanks for protecting the lint that was mercifully left in my pants pocket. And the dust balls that the criminals were too intimidated by the alarm to take from under our beds. They left the dust balls? Terrific. I bust a tail feather trying to protect this family, and what do I get in return? Exactly what you deserve. You are the irresponsible cretin who blew thousands of dollars on a criminal-friendly security system, aren't you? Irresponsible? Ha-ha! That's a laugh! We'll see who's irresponsible when I fix this alarm. Ungrateful family. Try to keep them safe, and all of a sudden you're irresponsible. <laughs> Couple of wires, switch it to. How hard could it be? Is it true, Mr. Tesloff, that the Interlopen Fuhrer 2000 alarm system has features which have been found to be extremely dangerous? Only if you're irresponsible enough to go inside the console and try to fix it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you made your point. Next up, Baby Bladeface. The house is now armed. Woohoo! You hear that? The house is armed! I did it! Who's irresponsible now, Bernice? For your information, the alarm is now working again. I've done that voodoo that I do so well. Meaning this family can once again feel secure and comfortable in their home. Hey, how come there's a pit of hydrochloric acid in front of our underwear drawers? Intruder must eliminate. Oh, I suppose I could tone it down a skosh. Motion sensors activated. Hey, everyone. Don't move! Okay, I won't move. Unless this is reverse psychology and you do want me to move. But if it's reverse reverse psychology, then you don't want me to move. But if it's reverse reverse re- Shut up! Okay, I'll shut up. 
Unless that was reverse psychology and you want me to keep talking. Duckman, here's something you haven't heard from me in the last, what, three or four minutes? This is all your fault! My fault? Hey, just because I fiddle with a couple of wires and create a deadly force field that'll brutally kill all of us if we move as much as an inch, suddenly I'm the fall guy! Okay, look. As head of the family, it's my responsibility to lead us out of this small and utterly surmountable predicament. And naturally, I have a plan. Run like hell for the basement! <laughs> Just goes to show you where a good plan will get you. Don't watch it, Bernice. You're stepping on my head. Like I can do any more damage. Tell me, Mr. Fix-It, what exactly are we going to do now? Very simple. We count on our neighbors. They broke bread with us last night, Bernice. We bonded. I have no doubt that the minute any one of them notices anything strange going on over here, they'll be more than anxious to rush to our aid. Any more lemonade, dear? You gotta get me out of here! I gotta get out! It's too much, you hear me? The walls are closing in on me. The ceiling is getting lower. There are strange, gigantic, lumpen shapes forming in the corners of the room! Look, I found my old contact lens. Please let me out! I can't take it! I can't take it! The loss of hope! The feelings of isolation! The pain in my face! I don't give a horse's hiney about your pain. We've been down here for ten minutes and you've spent the last eight folding like a cheap deck chair. She's right, Dad. You have been acting like a bit of a... Uh, what's the word? <coughs> That's it. Yeah, well, there's a reason I'm acting this way. I'm just afraid if I tell you, it'll make you think less of your old dad. Good point. Something happened when I was a kid, something I've carried with me all these years. I was six years old. I stole some candy from the Five and Dime and my dad found out. Instead of spanking me or yelling at me, he just sat down and calmly wrote a little note, put it in an envelope, and then told me to take it to the chief of police. When I did, the chief read the note, shook his head, then locked me in a jail cell. You were in jail when you were six? Turns out the note said this little boy stole some candy. Please lock him in a cell for an hour to teach him a lesson. But 15 minutes after he locked me up, the chief was leaning back in his chair, fell out, hit his head on a radiator, and went into a coma. No one else knew why I was in there, so I sat in that cell until he came out of the coma and let me go. How long were you in there? 16 months. Your father didn't come and get you for 16 months? Shut up! Just shut up! My daddy loved me! He had a lot on his mind, that's all! If he'd noticed I was missing, I know he would've come for me! He loved me, I tell you! I know he loved me! Didn't you, Daddy? Didn't you love me? Well, boys, your father's decided to check out early again. Any ideas? Well, sometimes the court will declare a person incompetent to handle his own affairs. Then he's sent to an asylum and all of his assets are turned over to his children. It's a pleasant thought, but I meant any ideas about how to get out of here? Get out of here? Get out of here? I'll do that. I'll get you out of here. I'm the father. It's my job to get you out of here, to keep you safe, to protect you against whatever comes along. Ah! Intruders detected in basement. Explosive device will detonate in 10 minutes, reducing intruders to lifeless piles of smoldering ash. Bad news for those intruders, huh? We're the intruders, Ajax. Now listen, everyone. When things have gotten tough, this family's always pitched in together. Like when we smuggled those people out of Nazi Germany into Switzerland. Glob of mucus. Oh, right. <laughs> well, what about the time we all pitched in together to get cable? Hey! What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. True. There was that. And that's just how we're going to get out of here by pitching in together. All Let's right. go for it, dog. Bernice, move Grandma Ma over here. Ajax, you get on her lap. Twins, you and Aunt Bernice steady, Ajax, while your old how could you ever dad him dad climbs up and saves the... You have fallen for the old emergency shut-off lever trick, thereby reducing the 10-minute countdown to 30 seconds. <laughs> if you're a criminal, you deserve the bodily atomization. If not, thank you for purchasing the Interlopen Fuhrer 2000. Oh, no! Oh, no! We're gonna be... 
incinerated in our own cellar. I can't think of a worse way to end my life. Hi, this is Casey Cash. I'm about to introduce the countdown to death. Okay, there's one worse way. But before I do, I'd like to dedicate a song to all those families out there who were trapped together in basements that are about to blow up. Kids, Bernice, this might really be the end. Look, I want to say something I've never said before. Stinky pinky bottle of inky? What, he has said it before? Just listen to me, will you? This isn't easy, I mean, I know I fell short in a few categories, but as a dad, I haven't been the greatest. Provider, head of the household, role model, or anything that can even be remotely confused with a parental figure. Thank you, Bernice. But it doesn't mean that I don't love you, kids. Or you, Grandmama. Or you, Burr. Oh, come here. <laughs> Guess that won't help resell, will it? Look, it's the bomb! And now here's the final countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Get down, everyone! 3, ah! 2, ah! 1. Heidi Ho, anyone home? Why, what are you doing here? I knew something was wrong when you didn't show up for work today, Duckman. I don't show up for work a lot of days. True, but you always call in with some lame and pathetically inadequate excuse that I pretend to believe so as not to unbalance the age-old fragile employer-employee relationship. Uncle Corfed, you must have disarmed the system. And just nanoseconds before it reduced us to molecules. Oh, so that was the cord I tripped over and unplugged on the front porch. Gee, Duckman, I hate to say it, but that was uncharacteristically heroic trying to save us like that. Yeah, true heroism. You're cool. Yeah, well, any dad would have done the same thing. What the hell was I thinking? As you can see, Mr. Bailey, Serta mattresses are so comfortable, people fall asleep real fast, thereby making the job of counting sheep unnecessary. So do you think we have any legal recourse against Serta? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, would it be fair to say that you've suffered emotional distress? Emotional distress? Yeah, we've suffered a lot of emotional distress. And my neck hurts. I think we have a case. You'll feel the difference the moment you lie down. Serta, we make the world's best mattress. Eats Whopper, takes 75. Action! Get the hell! Cut! Double meat, double cheese, double plate. Cut! Three second rule. Cut! 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 What? I get sweaty when I eat.
Swimming pools, movie stars, and a guy with a small appliance on his head peeing into a bucket. You won't find that in your guidebook. No, but if you turn left at this corner, I'll show you what we will find. Footprints of all the stars. Oh, wow. You know what that means to me? Freaking zero. I want to find the scene, man. Here we go again. The inside, backstage, beyond that red velvet rope where Jennifer Lopez is pounding drinks in Leo D's underground club, and then everyone's heading over to Brad Pitt's pool at 3 a.m. to date and mate and get crazy, yo! Oh, you mean the scene that we have absolutely no chance of finding. You know, that's where you're wrong, my friend. You're forgetting about Rudy. How could I forget about Rudy, Mike? You've been talking about him for three days straight. Hey, what's your problem? with Rudy. He was one of those cool actor guys who hated me all through high school. God, man, you are so paranoid. He didn't hate you. He was he was jealous of you, man. Come on. Sure he was. I mean, how could he not be? You always pushing around that AV car like you were cock of the walk. Rudy, leave it. Hey, Rudy, where are you? It's Mike. We're here, man. Hollyweird. Swimming pools. Movie stars. Ha, look at that. My feet are the same size as Clark Gable's. My hands are the same size as Greta Garbo's. My mouth is the same size as Monica Lewinsky's. <laughs> so what did Rudy say? Ah, he's still not there. Hey, that's okay. Because look, we can get tickets for the 2 o'clock taping of Win Mickey Rourke's Money. Oh, man, that book's for losers. We got to dig deeper. Find the real deal Hollywood info that no one else can get their hands on. Hey, start my five bucks. Oh, it's like I have a radio to God. Hollywood won't know what hit it. Get out of the way! Oh, no! Hey, Mike, think we'll see any stars? See stars? We're going to party with them. You know who Rudy hangs out with? Gwyneth Paltrow. Could you imagine... Hey, Gwyneth. Nice dress. But you know what would look even better on you? What? <laughs> wow, Gwyneth. Hey, Gwyneth. Nice dress. But you know what? Yeah, we're... right. In your dreams, ass face. But this is my dream. What if Rudy's out of town? Okay, what if he's shooting a movie? What do we do then? Hey, that's what the map's for. We'll pick a star, keep watch outside their house until they leave, and then follow them right to the scene. You mean stalk them? You say potato. <gasps> Mike, Lucille Ball's house is right over here. Who cares? What's she done lately? She's dead, Mike. No, she isn't. I saw her on TV last week. That was a rerun. She's dead. Nuh-uh. Uh-huh. Nuh-uh. Uh-huh. We'll see. Lucy! I'm home! Baba Lou! Lucille freaking ball is dead! You idiot tourist everything! Well, you can all Baba Lou, my sweet ass! All right, she's dead.
That was close. Hey, ooh la la. Ooh la. Ugh. Oh, hey, jeez. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Sorry, boys. Trixie's very protective of his mommy. No, that's okay, ma'am. We shouldn't have... Oh, my God. You're Veronica Baxter. Oh, well, bless you, dear. It's been ages since I've been recognized. Everybody Digs Mommy was my favorite show. Everybody Digs Mommy. She's the best mom in the land. Gary, we don't Everybody spill milk in this family. I've had men die in my arms so you can have milk. Their intestines dripping through these fingers. Now, Chief, I'm sure he didn't mean that to. That will bring those men back to life? Well, no, I guess it will I'm talking containment, mister. We let the milk spill, the juice could be next. After the juice, the soda. Larry, I told you, no guitar playing in the house. Why don't you go ride your bike? Aw, oh, Dad, I don't want to roll. I want to rock. <laughs> Now, Larry, your father is right. You shouldn't be playing the guitar like that. Oh, Mom. You should be playing it like this. <laughs> wow, Ruby. See, Jim, there's no generation gap in this family. Far out. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, TV lady, could we, uh, use your phone? It's kind of an emergency. Absolutely, positively. Well, this sure is nice of you, Mrs. Baxter. Oh, oh, please call me Veronica, and the pleasure is all mine. Oh, yes. All mine. Mm. Come right on in, boys. Ooh. <laughs> What was that? It sounded like a laugh track. Oh, Mike, check this out. It's the Everybody Digs Mommy living room. That's right. I had it built after the show was canceled. It makes me happy. Not that phone! <laughs> that phone is only for when my agent calls. Oh, use the one upstairs in my bedroom while I whip us up some snacks. Okay, we're not really hanging for lunch here, are we, Gare? Yeah, Mike. Come on, she's great. Yeah, if your idea of great is a whacked-out human raisin who lives in Toontown... Mike, she's a star. Okay, she's not like the rest of us. La, 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 la. Snacky wax for my boy, Dad. Little bit of this for my mac daddy. Little dash of that for sweet cheeks. And Mommy's gonna party like it's 1969. Hey, Rudy, help! It's me, Mike. I'm stuck in the has-been hotel with the freaking Crypt Keeper, man. <laughs> Call me at Klondike 50142. Hurry! And now it's time for Everybody Digs Gary. <laughs> Oh, this town, it's not like it was in the old days, mm, mm And did you hear someone destroyed the Chinese theater? Footprints covered in cement, imagine. Anywho, one thing they won't destroy is Veronica Baxter. This little lady's gonna be on top again, Larry. Uh, it's Gary. Mmm, that's a sexy name. I get it. You know, my absolute favorite episode was when the whole family went down to the Grand Canyon mm. and Larry lost his puppy, and you... <laughs> this was mm. great. You took a donkey all the uh. way down the canyon to the bottom just to get the little guy. But uh, what was funny is he was... It... How old are you, Gary? Uh, 21. Well, then the question is, sweet meat, 21 goes into 63 how many times? I don't understand. Throw mama a bone and let's get jiggly with it. Oh, mm, just okay, get that, that kind of tickle. I don't feel very comfortable. Oh, that was Rudy, man. We're out of here. Sounds great. Gotta go. Thank you, Miss Baxter. Bye-bye. <laughs> Nobody walks out on this fine piece. You'll be back. Everybody digs mommy, damn it. Huh? 
I feel dirty. Well, that's what you get for digging mommy too deep. I'm serious, Mike. I mean, it was almost like my own mother came on to me. Yeah, been there, done that. Took a long time to wash that one off. Whoa, 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 Rudy, it's me, man, it's me, Mike! Mike! <laughs> hey, bro! Sorry about that, man, I thought you were someone else. Hey, you guys got wheels? Uh, yeah. Hey, you remember Gary? <laughs> no. But hey! <laughs> I'll just go grab my coat and we'll go party! What's up? <laughs> right on, man. This is my girlfriend, Kathy. She's great. <laughs> Uh, it's nice to meet hey, how's you. How's it going? Mike, I do not have a good feeling about this. Maybe we should just go. Oh, what are you talking about? I hung out with that house plan with a wig all day long. I need to party, and Rudy's our ticket. I'm not backing down now. Uh, all right, I'm stoked. You guys got a car, right? Uh, yeah, we still got it. <gasps> Who's this guy? I'm still Gary. <laughs> all right, let's book it down! Woo! I, I would drive, you know, but my car's a little bit, um, impounded right now. You guys got a car, right? So rude, the, uh, the career's going good. Great, man, really great, really great. You know, but the, uh, the directors out here don't really understand my process, so, you know, they usually, you know, fire me, <laughs> which, which is totally cool, because the total hacks that run this town just don't get it. <laughs> So, when are we gonna find the scene? You don't find the scene, okay, man? The scene finds you. It's always moving, always shifting. But uh, don't worry, dude. Rudy will hook you up. First, uh, we gotta go to this producer's house. You guys got wheels, right? Hey, Rudy Judy's here! So, uh, you got the goodies, King too? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Oh, check this out, Gary. Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore, Ben Affleck. Oh, man, we are in the scene, my brother. We made it. Oh, my God. Mike, there she is. Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow. <gasps> no guts, no glory. I'm going in, man. Hey, Gwyneth. Nice dress. But you know what would look even better on you? What? <laughs> How was it? Dude, too sweet. <laughs> I know. Rudy, this is incredible, man. Thank you so much. Sure, bro. For what? But you got us to the scene. Now look at all these stars. Nev Campbell, Cher, Eric Estrada. They're not stars, they're lookalikes. Nobodies. That's Sue Williams, Renee Goodman, and Eric Estrada. Hey, Mike. Guess what? This isn't the scene, and that's not Gwyneth Paltrow. She's just a lookalike. Great, Gary. Does it look alike I care? Mmm, donuts. Hey! Where's my merchandise, Rudy? I didn't take it! I didn't take it! Yeah, well, who did? Oh, him! You could jack me, punk! It's just donuts, powder donuts! I don't wanna die, I'm too young! I don't wanna die, I haven't found the scene yet! I don't wanna die, tomorrow's my pre op! Hey, they're right here! Save yourselves. I'll hold them off. Remember me? That's pretty much a given. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, great party, Mike. Now what? You just jumped to that other roof. No way! I'm not doing it. The insanity ends right here. Race ya. Oh. Uh oh.
A piece of this slam hound. <laughs> Yeehaw! Holy crap! Yeah. Bring it out! <laughs> no! Oh, young boy, young Get her boy. off me! Get her off! Get her off, Mike! Yes, get her off! <laughs> ah! You want to be first? Okay. Hey, come here, you! Oh, you're a strong one. No. It's not what it looks like. Oh, no, it's not what it looks like. Please! Nope, don't struggle. Oh, that's odd. Well, that was a close one. Good shot, amigo. I didn't do anything. I thought you did something. It wasn't me. No pulse. Mike, she's got no pulse. Oh, no, you mean she's... She's dead. We just killed Mommy! No, no, Gary. She's been on the booze and the bills since they canceled her show. We didn't kill Mommy. Hollywood killed Mommy. Oh, it's so tragic. All she ever wanted was to go out on top. Yeah, well, another three seconds and she would have. Oh my god, Mike, the neighbor! The neighbor was watching us through the window! He thinks we did it! What do we do? What do we do? Calm down! Let's just think about this. Now, if the cops find her body with our fingerprints on it, then... We're up for murder! Hold on, I got an idea. Well, it better be good, because the cops are going to be here any minute. Okay, easy does it. I still can't believe she's dead. <laughs> I mean, two minutes ago she was molesting me, and now she's gone. Whoa. 911 operator. Oh my god, oh my god! Minor setback, but the plan is still in place. What is the plan exactly? We're just gonna get her out of the house and dump her somewhere. No, we're not dumping her anywhere. Look, I don't care if we rot in prison for 30 years. This is Veronica Baxter. I won't be like the rest of Hollywood, Mike. Using her up and leaving her out to dry just because she's a dead, naked, alcoholic, has-been, pedophile wrapped in a sheet. She's Veronica Baxter, damn it, and she deserves dignity and respect. Okay. Whatever you say, brother. Dignity and respect it is. Mike! Sorry, man. Thought you were closer. And the police. Right away. What is the address of the crime? Night deposit? Very convenient. No, Mike. I'm taking her inside. Uh, looks like this is the end of the line for Veronica. But just know that wherever she ends up, I'm sure she'll appreciate what you did for her. <clears throat> <gasps> Name? Uh, Veronica Baxter? Yeah, uh, sorry, she's not on the list. No, but she belongs here. Hey, everyone thinks they belong here. Now get lost. I can't believe this town. Even the morgue's got an A-list. Tits for tots, boys! <laughs> hey, do I know you? <gasps> You're the guys with the car! <laughs> you made it, man! <gasps> they with me! They with me! What's up? This is where the scene is? The morgue? Oh my god, that's Veronica Baxter! I love her! Dance with me, mommy! Ooh, shake it, girl! At least she looks happy. Is that Veronica Baxter, the mom on Everybody Digs Mommy? I love that show, but I thought she was dead. Get, Get me Veronica, Veronica Baxter's agent. Well, Mike, this is the scene. Great, huh? 
Yeah, sure. If your idea of great is getting stabbed in the back by your high school buddy while watching a bunch of Hollywood vampires play hacky sack with a dried up corpse, then yeah, I'm having a blast, Gary. So what do you want to do now? I, I don't know. Hollywood's dead. Veronica's dead. Lucy's dead! She is dead! <laughs> Sad news out of Hollywood today. TV's Veronica Baxter, star of Everybody Digs Mommy, died of a heart attack at the age of 63. Hey, Gary, how many times did 21 go into... Shut up, Mike. In a related story, Fox has announced plans to produce a movie version of her beloved show to star Gwyneth Paltrow as Mommy. Yeah. The Gwyneth with or without testicles. All right, shut up, Gary. You're watching Comedy Central. If you thought freshman year was rough, wait till you see it animated. Stick around for undergrads. Coming up next. one of the most popular Easter treats in the world. So sweet! <laughs> Try our other Marshmallow Peeps Easter treats too. Marshmallow Peeps, always in season. You want big value? Here's a big idea. The big and tasty, just a buck on McDonald's dollar menu. A juicy quarter pound burger with lettuce, tomato, and all the trimmings. Try finding a burger like that on any other value menu. The dollar menu also gives you what you really want. America's favorite fries, sweet treats, and lots more. For your tastes, your appetite, your dollar. It's your biggest value. McDonald's dollar menu. Oh, I don't know how to make anything fancy. Make something homey style. Hey. Ooh, cheese, beef, more cheese, bacon, three more strips. I declare this Extreme Burger the winner. Oh, ma. You've created a Whopper. For a limited time, get the new Extreme Bacon and Cheese Whopper. Juicy flame-broiled beef, two kinds of cheese, four strips of bacon at Burger King now. I made a when he Whopper. comes back here, I grab him. Go, go. The salmon. The salmon spends its life relentlessly striving to get upstream. With ceaseless endeavor, it fights the currents of massive rivers, drags itself over rocks and shallow water, forces its way up huge waterfalls, never stops, never rests, just battles and battles its way upstream. Finally, heroically, it reaches its goal, and it's absolutely knackered. And it dies. Remember, you are not a salmon. From the very beginning, Smart Balance Buttery Spreads have contained no trans fatty acids and no hydrogenated oil. Trans fat can raise LDL bad cholesterol and lower HDL good cholesterol. Just the opposite of Smart Balance, which has the right balance of fats to help improve cholesterol. Smart Balance Buttery Spreads taste great without the cholesterol and butter or trans fat that's in margarine. It's that simple. Smart Balance Buttery Spreads. We have the right balance and the great taste. Grandma, what big ears you have. Why, all the better to get showtimes and tickets when I call Movie Phone, my dear. Hello, and welcome to AOL Movie Phone. Grandma, what big chunky fingers you have. Why, all the better to click with when I want reviews, showtimes, or tickets from MoviePhone.com, my dear. Grandma, what a big... Oh, look, honey, do you want to go to the movies or don't you? Visit MoviePhone.com or America Online Keyword Movie Phone. <laughs>
been reading. Mm, let me see. Hmm, come on. Let's see. Featured article. A delicious beef bowl shop in Canada recommended by Kyosin. I just can't understand her taste. Man, I sure wish I could get caught up in long, boring articles like that, too. Oh, what's boring about it? Choosing an elegant restaurant for a romantic date is a very serious problem for girls. You dumbass! Don't make me laugh too much. Anyway, take a look at this. What? The newspaper? Hmm, well, let's see. What? Isn't it, though? A Shinjuku businessman was teased for his transvestism and set fire to a co-worker's house? Oh, Milk! This is big news! You dumbass! Not there, not there! The stocks went down! What? What stocks? Oh, Milk, you're telling me you own stocks? You dumbass! Own them! I lost two million yen in the last three months! Two million yen in the last three months! Wah, 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 wah. Two, two million? Idiot, you're only a child! Stop it right away! Shut up, you big fat dummy! D dummy Even little kids have a speculative spirit! Listen to me, Milk. Stocks are strictly <laughs> Oh, telephone. Sorry, Tetsuko, but that's all the lecturing I have time for. Maybe it's an order from the president. Really? Yes? Hello? This is Ramirian Island. Just kidding. Uh, um, is this Miss Milk's residence? Yes, it is. Can I help you? You've seen us on Mr. Deserted Island. Mr. Deserted Island. I'm a representative of Yen Shapo Jizo-san. My name is Mari. Ah. Well, we are still here waiting for this month's payment. I've got no money to pay you. What? Shit, it's always money, 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 money. Be quiet. What's wrong, Milk? Creditors asking for money again? You got that right, Tetsuko. So this time I went and told them off right. What? Miss Milk! Who is it? Miss Milk! You've already fallen six months behind in rent! You will pay it today! Damn it! Now it's the landlord. Oh, Milk, there's nothing we can do. Shall we pay him? You dumbass! If we go ahead and pay the landlord, it means we've lost. I will take care of this. Miss Mill! I know you're in there! Miss Mill! I know- Wow, dying is such a surprise. I am the Netherworld spokesman, Tanba. Can I help you? Be careful or I'll turn you into a wax doll. When did Mr. Tanba start living here? <laughs> Apart and sell you off to the scrapyard. What are you saying to me? Oh, Milk. Oh, that's right. Wait, Milk. Where are you going? Thank you, Amen. Hey, huh? Aunt. What? Who's that? Up here. Up here. Hey. You think you can settle down in my yard for free? Pay up! <gasps> if you don't pay, I'll pour water down your nest with the hose. Uh, what is this? Mama, I'm scared. Something's coming. Don't say anything, Ario. Quiet. Hey, hiding isn't going to do you any good. I'll chase you down good and proper. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, boy. She's totally possessed by the evil spirit of greed. Oh, 
Excuse my sudden intrusion. I am the voice of Hanage's heart. Well, money makes the world go round. No good deal involves clean money. You viewers out there can do worse than heed my words. A hundred thousand goes just like that, you know. Evil spirits be gone! Bo-ta! That's bad. It appears as though I was possessed by greed. Bye-bye! I'll be going to Yumi and Dachi's place next! Hey, Milk! The phone is ringing! Okay, I'm coming. Milk, hurry up and answer the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As they say, haste makes waste. Hello, this is Shimuni. Just kidding. Yeah, it, it, it's me, Milk. Oh, Mr. President. That's right. I'm definitely the president. Most definitely. Oh, Mr. President. It has been a long time. Been well? Yes, yes, the president is well. The area below my belly button is especially still in its thirties. Hi, you lady killer, you killer. No, no, not that great, actually. You technician, you. T technician Milk Chan. I don't know if I'd call myself a technician. I'm too modest. But... It's true that my exquisitely light touch makes all the wonderful big busted ladies I go out with go, Oh, you're so wonderful! I'm paralyzed! I think I'll die without you! And them screaming like that makes me happy! But I get tired, too! One, you know what I two, mean? The ladies three, are four, 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 six... I can't see it! Not out loud! Understand? Eh? Eh? Hey, Tetsuko, skipping the pills is making my bank balance increase steadily. Hello? Wow, you're right! What should we eat? Yes, yes, Mr. President, I'm listening. Yo, oh, okay. Uh, did, you, did you hear the part where the, the ladies call me President GTO? <laughs> Don't let it go to your head. You got it! So shouting, Milk Chan. Fine. Very well. I will forgive you, but just this one time. I am very sorry. Good, very good. By the way, did you need something? I have your very important orders for the day. <clears throat> yes, sir. An order, Mr. President? That's right. Today's orders. Milk Chan, lately in our good country, there are lots of counterfeit bills in circulation. Bills are counterfeit? Tetsuko, Hanagi, he said counterfeit bills, counterfeit bills. Did you say counterfeit bills, Mr. President? That's right, Milk Chan. As you know, our bills have Miss Kin's face on them. You do know that, don't you, that all the bills have Miss Kin's face on them? Well, all the counterfeit bills in circulation seem to have Miss Kin's face emblazoned on them. What? Miss Chin's face. That's right, Milk. And that's why the general public can't tell them apart. That's quite an intellectual crime, Mr. President. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, at this rate, our nation's currency will lose trust. Milk Chan, please go and do something about it. Yes. Roger, Roger. <laughs> Everyone, let's go. Yeah! <laughs> Counting on you, Milk Chan. Video essay Butter Sauteed Mushrooms by Akiko Maitaike. How should I spend my afternoon when I wake up late? Should I listen to music and do nothing? Or should I put my efforts into making my specialty cream stew? If I simmer it as I think of you, the room will be filled with the fragrance of happiness. How should I spend my afternoon when I wake up late? Oh, someone's here. Could it be the Duskin Exchange? Oh 
no, I'd better hurry and put on my woman's wig. All right, arrest the counterfeiter. Say, Mill, do we have any clues that will lead to his arrest? Hmm, what should we do? This is starting to be a pain in the butt. Oh, goodness, Milk. But we just left. You get bored of new things so easily. Shut up, you old bag. The creator is getting impatient. Let's go. We're going back. Creator? What creator? Milk, you're talking nonsense again. Uh-huh. Milk is going back no matter what. Really? Uh oh, telephone. Oh, well. This is shop myself. Just kidding. Milk Chan? It, it, it's me, the president. Are you working hard? Say what? Calling me all the way out here? Of course I'm doing this seriously. No, oh, no. It's just that... It's just that I forgot to tell you something. What is it? Let's hear it. Okay. I had the King's Idea Laboratory that our country is so proud of create an excellent mecha that might be useful for this very important mission. Please go get it immediately. Roger, Roger. Yeah! Isn't the King's Idea Laboratory where you were born, Tetsuko? That's right. So the person who made me should be there. My daddy should be there. How dreamy! <laughs> daddy, you're a piece of junk. What? what? You're so mean to my feelings as a maiden. <laughs> the maiden's mad. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> From the world of TV, I am the director of this King's Idea Laboratory, Dr. Eyepatch. Milk chair. What Mr. President requested is ready. Director? Could this person be my daddy? How dreamy! <laughs> By the way, is that piece of junk next to you useful? You can exchange it for a new one any time. Please, may he not be my daddy. All right, here is the accident mecha, Robo Dog One. Oh! <laughs> Promotional video. Start! Mecha number zero zero one, Robo Dog One. The Robo Dog One that we are introducing here today can track and discriminate various things just by placing a program cassette into a slot behind its head. Warning: This video is only an illustration. <laughs> This time, you will get this Kim Jin Distinction Program, too. Well then, Mil Chen, I wish you luck. Next time, an army of pigeons will come to Ken Jin and... A hundred Jin, a hundred Ken. A hundred Jin, a hundred Ken. A hundred Jin, a hundred Ken. I am the counterfeiter, and all right, with this money, I'm going to eat my fill of Belgian waffles! Just a little bit more. A hundred gin, a hundred kin, a hundred... Well, here goes. Okay, dog, I want you to smell this money. You're right. Okay, here's the next one. Gin, 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 it's fake milk! Oh, oh wow. You're right again. Hey, Tetsuko, what have you been tapping 
the way at that computer for? This robot dog is amazing, unlike a piece of junk like you. <coughs> oh my, how rude! Don't put me in the same category as vulgar robots that can sniff out money. <coughs> hey, is this going to be a junk versus junk fight? Go, go! No holds bar, go! Oh, come on, don't be so stupid, Milk. More importantly, according to the information I have gathered on Tetsuko's special internet... Tetsuko's special internet, huh? That's right! According to that information, the counterfeit bills are apparently being found most often at Belgian waffle shops. What? Belgian waffle shops? Yes, that's right, Milk. The 21st century is the modern age of interactive information networks. Quit talking with your head in the clouds, Tetsuko. We're going to open a Belgian waffle stand right away. What? Open up a Belgian waffle stand? So, Milk Can, Tetsuko, and Hanage opened a Belgian waffle stand in order to lure out the counterfeiter. Sounds tasty. Egg and mix. Put in lots of butter, vanilla essence. Put in cinnamon according to taste. It is the secret to the divine taste. Milk and flour. Crack egg and mix. Put in lots of butter, vanilla essence. It is the secret to the divine taste. My Belgian waffles, no love did I waste. Now we have some. Yay! 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 Well, here's another bag. Milk, they turned out really tasty looking yet again. Yeah, yeah. What is she, an idiot? Oh, oh, the smell. It's the smell of Belgian waffles. I'd like one, please. Hello. Okay, dog, which is it? It's Clint I guess it's real. Here, it's hot, so be careful. Thank you very much. Très bien. Milk, did you hear that? She said très bien. My Belgian waffles are getting great reviews. You idiot. Maybe I should send her back to the factory once. <laughs> I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat with this money. I'm gonna eat tons of Belgian waffles! Oh my god, this is the smell of Belgian waffles! <laughs> Give me all the Belgian waffles I can get with this money! What? All of that? <laughs> That's right! Okay, please wait a minute. I'll toast them right away. Milk, it's a huge order! We're going to get busy now! You dumbass! Behold, dog! Gin, <laughs> gin, it's fake! What? Then that means... That's right! He's the counterfeiter! What? My cover's blown! Dog, go! Go! Ah! And we made all the greedy people happy. 
All right, with this money, the company won't have to fall. All right, with this money, I could become a real woman. All right, with this money, I can get all the volumes of Kochikame. Our mission has been completed. Let's go eat sushi or something. into my life. They were in my home. Let's bring them out. Gentlemen, what do you have to say for yourselves? We're just a couple of corn-fed Foster Farms yeah. chickens. Really? Let's roll the tape. Oh. Idiot! Oh, no, you won't. It's oh. coming! Foster Farms fresh chicken. Always natural, always fresh, nothing artificial added. Now famous candy bars are bite-sized. Stupid bloody bag. Never get the bloody hey, thing. No, 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 no. I'm just but kind we of really want to show you I've something. got something to do. I'm trying to get this. You really should see this. What, what, what is it then? What is it? These aren't Pepsis. They're Pepsi twists. You're, you're a bunch of bloody magicians. Uh, we're not the Osborns. You're not? We're the Osmonds. I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll. Sharon! Sharon, the kids have turned into the husband.
Oh, there, there, dear. Go back to sleep. Like twists? Pepsi Twist and Diet Pepsi Twist. It's a twist on a great thing. build a fire. Now, the first thing to remember is always place a government certified Uncle Toxie log as deep as you can into the pit, far away from your lungs and genitals. Now, who remembers how to light this handy little appliance? Oro? You simply start the fire with the spark of life which God put into all of his creatures. Very good. You may do the honors. There we go, boys. Hot, delicious fire. Oh. Now, who wants to hear a ghost story? Yeah. Okay. How about I read The Attack of the Tree Huggers? No. The Flesh Eating Catholics? No. Huh. I know. The Spine Chilling Lies of Charles Darwin. Yeah. Once upon a time, on a dark, desolate island, there lived a hideous, ugly, bloodthirsty scientist <gasps> who said that man came from apes. And he tried to prove this by making us believe there was an unseen creature who was half man, half monkey. Gosh! This grotesque creature's name was the Missing Link. <laughs> the end. Oral. I think I just earned my scaredy badge. Great work, Doey. Okay, kids, time to turn off the fire and hit the sack. Put on your anti-cancer shields, everybody. <laughs> Good night, boys. Hey, Dewey, wake up. We better hurry if we're gonna get our conquering nature badges. Oh, good idea. Well, I think this hike is the perfect way to appreciate the beauty of the Lord's Earth. Maybe, but I'm scared of wild animals, Oral. Gee, I wouldn't worry about... Oh, look! Wow! It's the fictional missing link from the ghost book! Say, that should take care of our coincidence badges. And our melting badges. Yippee! Huh, what do you know? It's become a nice day all of a sudden. Hmm. Hey, you two, glad you're back. We're just about ready to head Look home. Look what we found, Mr. Carlson. It's the missing link from the spooky Darwin story. No, it can't be. Uh, how about, how about, uh, d don't worry, kids. Uh, this looks to me like some kind of monkey with a mask on. Or, or, or maybe a hippie or an Alaskan or something. Um, now, now we get a uh, shoe. Scat hippie. Here. Fetch. <laughs> Everybody having a good time? Great way to mingle, huh? Hmm. Thought there'd be more women. Plenty of sweets. I don't know how Jesus stayed so scrawny, you know? Ooh, look. It says faith. How fun for a cookie. It's not a library, ma'am. Betsy! Reverend Putty, may I have two chocolate leopard cakes and a candy cane and Abel for my, um... Oh, for your brother? Well, he's... You got eight bucks? Sure do. There you go. Enjoy. Thanks. <laughs> you know this individual oral? Sure do, Reverend. He's my friend. <gasps> oral. <laughs> 
This European man cannot be your friend. You know full well that you should never trust a foreigner. Gee, do you really think he's from Europe, Mom? Of course. Listen to that accent. Oral, your friend is not a proper Christian. Gee, how do you know, Reverend? Well, look at him, Oral. I mean, this thing, it looks exactly like a... A what, Miss Gulptham? Well... He obviously doesn't believe in geniuses. Geniuses? I'll take it from here, folks. <clears throat> That's right, Oral. Geniuses. It's a clever combination of the words genius and genesis. Huh? Oh, yeah. Geniuses is the most simplistic way of disproving evolution while at the same time proving that through the miracle of God's pure brain power, he whipped up the universe in his heaven-shaped laboratory hundreds of hundreds of years ago. Wow. In fact, geniuses is so simplistic that even the lowest form of life can understand it. I don't think his tiny brain could hold an idea any more challenging or complex. Well, there seems to be no alternative. Let's force him into learning before he ruins everything. But how can we force him into learning, Principal Fakie? It's simple, Oral. All you need in order to teach is a little intimidation. And fear! <laughs> All right, let's start with the basics. If you don't believe in this, you go here and burn forever. <laughs> Fear of God in 2.3 seconds. This bozo's gonna be a Christian no time flat. And that's no threat. Apparently, there's a new craze called conservation. Huh? Mm. Leave it to the liberals. They take a perfectly fine word like conservative and rape us with it. Oh. Mom, Dad, it's 8 o'clock. Oh, boy, my new favorite show. From a block of ice to God's ears, it's the Link McMissin Show. Good afternoon, citizens of Moralton. I am Link McMissins. My guest today is Dr. Castings Palpable. Our topic... Evolution versus geniuses. Now, you <gasps> believe in this crackpot theory of evolution, don't you, Dr. Palpable? Yes, of course. There is empirical evidence. Don't change the subject, Doctor. Even you can't ignore all the evidence that God made Adam out of dirt and Eve was a spare rib. That's just logic, Doctor. Come now. There are fossils. Fossils, that... fossils. You're like a broken record. <laughs> Any rational mind would know that God planted dinosaur bones in the earth in order to grow dinosaurs. Well, interesting theory. Well, you might want to check out this artist's rendering of Darwin's proposed missing link. Ah. Ridiculous. Nothing like this ever existed. It's preposterous. Now take a look at this picture of you from several weeks ago. That's me? Uh, yes, albeit a sleeker, sexier you, but you nonetheless. <laughs> Mr. Nick Missins, how do you account for your jutting brow ridge and your stooped ape-like stature? How? Yes, and when is the last time you saw a homo sapien completely covered in fur? When? And who else do you know that was thawed from a huge block of ice? Who? <gasps> who? Gosh. <laughs> know it all, scientist. Boy, Link really ripped him a new brain hole, didn't he? Mm, yes. I don't know, Dad. I'm a little worried about him. About Link? Oral. He's a professional right-wing talk show host. That means he's God's mouthpiece. And everyone knows that it's uh, a sin to worry about God's mouthpiece, son. Oh, okay. Well, I think I'll go over to Forgetty's for a nightcap bye. Have fun, dear.
chuck him in the freezer while we decide what to do with him. I hope that fat pig doesn't eat all my bake sale leftovers. All right, now what? That thing is dangerous. I know. Let's go drink about it at Spaghetti. Good idea. Oh, Cream puffs do you need, Reverend Flashwing? Make it a dozen, Zorl. I feel lucky tonight. <laughs>